This video is here to show you that you can take care of the bearings in your trailer all by yourself. This is one of those projects where if there's a difficulty scale of one being the easiest and 10 being the most difficult, this is definitely a one or two in terms of difficulty. But in terms of messy, this might be a nine or a 10 in terms of messy jobs because you're dealing with grease, lots of it, and you're using a lot of it all over the place. We're gonna cover boat, trailer, wheel bearing, repacking, seals, the whole nine yards. It's not a hard job to do. You can actually do it with hand tools, but it's a messy job. It's a really messy job. So grab yourself some rubber gloves. Not those rubber gloves, these rubber gloves. Roll of paper towels or some rags, and let's get started. The ones we're working on today, they're really small. They're these little eight inch ones. The same principle applies whether you're working on really small ones or much larger ones like these ones here. Let's get started with inspecting and removing the old parts. So one of the first things you want to do is jack up that side of the trailer. And once you've got it jacked up and you've got that wheel off the ground, then you're able to actually take everything off. And what's interesting is these things come off as the whole assembly. So you don't actually have to take the tire or the rim off of the hub. You can take it all off together. Now mine actually has this center grease fitting cover for the hub. And whenever you have one of these center grease fittings like this, this is like a bearing buddy or other type of device. Uh, the idea behind that is that squirts grease into the wheel hub. And I'll talk more about that later in this video. Whatever the center cap is, whether it's this or just a regular grease cap, that has to be removed to be able to get to the center nut that holds the whole entire wheel onto the axle. So. That's the first thing we have to do, is we have to get that off. Now, the way these are put on is they are actually press fit in there. So they're hammered in. There's no wrenches or anything like that. So the only way I know how to remove these is uh, by tapping it with a hammer. And so what I'm doing is I'm just gently tapping around the edge of this thing with a hammer, trying to slowly work it loose. And I am just gently tapping as I rotate the tire. And it's starting to come a little bit loose now, I'm getting a little bit of a gap. Now this cover, whenever it comes off, will be completely filled with grease. And you can see the grease inside of there. I'm taking a look at this grease and the grease is black and goopy and drippy looking. So the really good thing about it is it's not milky, it's not super watery, uh, it's grease and that there's plenty of it in there, but it is a bit thin and this is in the dead of winter and has been, hasn't been driven anywhere in a while. So that's not warmed up at all and it's, it's, it's a little bit soft. Now what I'm doing is giving the rim a good spin. Uh, I should have done this before I took the, the cover off, but I want to see how this wheel spins. That will tell me a lot about how these bearings are, whether or not there's any noise, whether there's any grinding or you know rattly sounds or anything like that or squeaking. And uh, with mine, I'm not hearing anything like that. And it's rolling very freely both directions. So that's a really good sign that my bearings are not dry, rusted, or completely shot. Another test we want to do is grab a hold of the tire and give it a bit of a wiggle. Now what you'll notice with mine is as I'm giving it a big wiggle, you can see that the tire, the wheel is actually wiggling just a little bit. So that's a little bit concerning because these are supposed to not really wiggle. So that could mean that my bearings are worn or possibly that the castle nut's not tight enough. Now we clean the grease off of here and underneath of this grease, there is a cotter pin that goes through the axle and there is a castle nut on there. Some people refer to these as something else. I've always called them castle nuts because they look like a castle. We just need to uh, straighten this cotter pin out and get it out of the way. So grab my pliers, we straighten this cotter pin out. And so we straighten that out. Once we've got that straightened out, we grab a hold of the cotter pin and uh, Get that out of there. I probably should have brought some different tools with me. These pliers should do the job though if I keep playing with it. There we go. Got our cotter pin out. Now I'm actually going to replace the cotter pin with a new one. I'm not going to keep that cotter pin. And now you can see that castle nut actually moves once that cotter pin has been removed. And the castle nut was quite loose. If you notice, I was able to tighten it up by hand. And once I tightened it up by hand, 
now that tire doesn't uh, doesn't wobble at all. So that castle nut was put on there quite loose. If your castle nut's not that loose, or whenever you're going to snug it down, an adjustable wrench usually can fit right over these things. And once again, if they're all soaked in grease and everything's good, it should come right off, like this one here. Now we don't want to lose our castle nut because we're going to reuse that. And behind this castle nut usually is a flat washer. And there isn't. There's no flat washer. Which is interesting because usually there's a flat washer right behind this castle nut because the flat washer goes between the castle nut and the bearing. We can literally just pull everything off now that the castle nut is off. The next thing that's left right here is the bearing and the bearing just fits in there over top of the axle and in between that and the wheel. And I pulled it out and there's our bearing. Slides out. Let me pull the bearing out of the way. That looks good. I'll wipe the rest of the grease off our fingers. And now we can just pull the wheel right off of the axle shaft. And there you can see the clean axle and the very back part of the axle, there's a little wider section there. And that's where the axle seal fits over top of that. There's a lot of grease on this inner axle seal. And that was one of the reasons why I wanted to get into this. The axle itself has some grease on it and this seal has a lot of grease on it, meaning that is grease that has leaked out of the axle because chances are the rubber seal on the inside of that is not sealing onto the axle as well as it should be. And the problems with that is that can let water coming into the axle and it also can let the grease out of the axle. Two things you don't want to have happen, especially with a boat trailer. We have to get that axle seal out in order to get the inner bearing out. Now there might be some specialized tools to help pull out a, an axle seal. What I've always found works quite well is a screwdriver. There is the flat washer. Somebody placed the flat washer on the inside of the rim instead of the outside of the rim, which is very odd. I think somebody put this one together wrong the last time they worked on this because I have never seen the big flat washer on the inside before. And let's get that inner seal removed. So I'm putting my screwdriver between the seal and the inner bearing, or in this case, the washer, and just popping on it with my hand there and it popped right out. And you can see here how that seal actually fits and goes all the way up into that wider part of the axle shaft. And that's where it fits in there nice and snug. And then here we have the flat washer, which once again, I've always seen that right underneath of the castle nut on the outer bearing, never on the inner bearing. And then here's our inner wheel bearing. Now I think there are some style of rims where the inner and the outer wheel bearings may be slightly different, but I believe on this type of them they're exactly the same. So that means they're interchangeable. If you're doing what I'm doing, which is I'm going to be reusing these bearings, the bearing sits in, in there and there's something called a race that's in there as well, which is a thin metal sleeve that fits in that the bearing rolls on. And an inner and an outer bearing, if you switch them around, the race could have worn differently between an inner and outer bearing because those two pieces have worn together and you want to keep that relationship going. So you want to make sure you have your inner bearing with your inner race, your outer bearing with your outer race, unless you're replacing the bearings, which in my case, I am not. Okay, so now that we have it all take it apart off of the trailer. What we need to make sure we do is we measure everything correctly so that we're ordering the exact right parts. We wanna measure the outer diameter of the seal, the inner diameter of the seal, the uh, inner diameter of the outside because I'm gonna order a new cap where I'm replacing the greasable fitting so I can also measure that that uh, grease cap that's on there. And since we're not replacing the bearings, those are the only measurements we need to take. Where I decided to go to to order the parts for this particular project was eTrailer.com. They are not a sponsor, but I like the fact that they specialize in this. And so a lot of times they have a variety of options to pick and they have a lot of extra information to be able to help you get the right components that you need. Customer service and the usability of their website makes it very easy to try to pick out these types of things. How come I'm not buying new wheel bearings? How come I'm just repacking these old wheel bearings? Yes, it's messier. It's not that expensive to buy wheel bearings. But once again, I take very, very short trips 
And these wheel bearings are in fine shape. There's nothing wrong with them. So I chose to only replace the things that absolutely needed to be replaced. My inner axle seals, my cotter pins, and then of course I didn't like the big clunky grease fittings that were on these wheels, so I replaced them with dust caps. And then I'm gonna get a tub of high performance synthetic grease. And that's it. Because with proper lubrication, these bearings will last forever. To order all of those things for my particular application, with the shipping and everything costs $43.54. You can order a complete kit and from each trailer they have one that comes with the inner and the outer race, the inner and the outer bearings, the grease seal, uh, a washer, and the cotter pin. You can get that and there's a lot of people who that's the way they would go with this kind of thing. If you do that, the races need to be removed and replaced as well with the new races. So the way the races come out is you basically tap them out with a, uh, you know, a chisel, a flat chisel or a screwdriver or something like that. They're just press fit in there. And then the new ones, people usually use the old ones to help push the new ones in, or you can get a special tool. I'll put the link in the description that actually helps seat the bearing race into the wheel. So if you're doing this completely, that's how you would do it. And the trick is with those bearing races is not to scratch or gouge the new ones up as you're putting them in. You need to make sure that they're in there square and they're flat and they're not scraped up because the bearings roll along these races. Box came today from e-trailer. Let's see what we got here. High performance marine grease. I got it in a tub so I can Goop my hands around in here to pack my wheel bearings. We got our two new inner seals, got two new cotter pins, and two caps. Once again, this is a messy, messy job, as you saw with taking things apart, and it's gonna be just as messy putting it back together because we're dealing with grease, and we need to re-lubricate things. So we've got our roll of paper towels, We've got yet another pair of mechanics gloves, and now we've pulled out all of our old bearings and parts. The mistake I made is I put everything together, so my inner and my outer bearing, I don't remember which one's which, but that's okay. My races were clean, my bearings looked good, so I have a feeling it'll all go back together just fine, even if I switch them around. Worst case scenario, this stuff makes noise and has a problem, then I will buy new bearings and races. It's not the end of the world. As you see, it's a messy job, not a hard one. So let's clean everything up that we're reusing. So first of all, we have our washer. My flat washer is very scuffed up from being put on the wrong place. It should be on the outside, not on the inside. Let's wipe down our castle nut, get that all clean. Got our new cotter pin. I matched it up with the old cotter pin. It's the same, which looks good. And then we have our bearings. Now what some people will do when they're gonna repack their bearings is they will clean these in a parts cleaner to get all of the old grease out of there to put in completely new grease. And there's nothing wrong with that approach and I forgot that I even had a parts washer where I could have done this. What I decided to do was I actually just wiped off a lot of the excess old grease, which happens to be black, and then decided to pack the new grease in there with the old grease still in there because my new grease is blue. And my thinking is I'll pack in my new blue grease until blue grease squirts out everywhere and then I know I got all the old black grease out. Now there are some special tools you can get for helping to pack the grease into wheel bearings to make the job a lot easier. Once again, I'm cheap and I've done this by hand since I was probably 16 years old. And the way I've always done it is you take a glob of the grease and you put it in the palm of your hand and then you take the bearing and you press it into that blob of grease. And what you're doing is you're pressing it in from one side until it squirts out the other side of the bearing. The grease I bought is marine grease and synthetic, and it's very thick, very sticky, very thick grease. So I'll put a big glob of this in my hand. And then what I do is I take the bearing and I'm just pushing it around the outside of it. And as soon as I start doing it, because there's already black grease in there, black grease is squirting out the top side of it. So I'm just gonna keep working my way around that bearing, pushing that grease in all the way around the bearing with black grease coming out the top. And I'm just gonna keep doing that until blue grease starts coming out the top side of the bearing.
say, I think this would have been easier had I put my bearings into a parts washer or use some way to clean out all of the old grease first, because that way I've just got blue grease that I'm dealing with instead of having to keep constantly wiping away the black grease as I was packing in blue grease. But it's not that this is wrong, it's just a different way of doing it. As you can see, you go through a lot of paper towels and rags as you're doing this. Once we have both wheel bearings completely packed with grease and they're all ready to go, we move everything out of the way because what we need to do now is we now need to put together the inside of the hub. So we have our inner race, which is already in there, which I will clean the grease out of that. Then we set the inner bearing in. Now basically the rule of thumb with this sort of stuff is you really can't use too much grease. If you have too much grease in here, it's just going to squirt on out as you put everything together. But you want everything to be very well greased and lubricated. So sticking some extra grease down in there, putting some grease in before the bearing goes in, putting the bearing in, letting it squirt a bit of grease out, all of that's fine. Just makes it messier, but that way you know you've got enough grease in there. And then we set our axle seal in place. And the way I like to do it is I take a wooden block and set it on there to try to be able to tap it down nice and square. Uh, you don't want to let the lip of this get bent or damaged in any way. So I just kind of tap on it and keep checking it as I'm tapping to try to get it seated. And you can feel whenever it goes down in place and once it's down in place. And I just do a few more taps to have it all set completely flush inside of the center of the hub. And as you can see, it's completely flush with the inside of the center of the hub. So now we've got the inside all taken care of. And in order to put everything on the outside, we need to go back out to the trailer. Because I took this apart and had to wait for parts to come in, I actually sealed up the axle with a bag. So that way it keeps uh, rain and dirt and all from getting into there and messing up my axle. Let's wipe all the old grease off of the axle. Get that all cleaned up. And what I do at this point in time is I actually put grease all over the axle. Uh, grease it all up really good, all the way up and down the axle shaft. So that way there's some grease all along the path through there. And now we can slide the wheel lock on there. Now when the wheel slides on, that axle seal needs to go all the way up against the back edge. So we set our wheel in place and the axle seal will fit all the way up against the back edge. And in this case, because it's a small rim, I can peek around with my head to see that it's all the way back there. And other ways you, you, can, you can kind of feel if it's all the way pushed on or not. And the castle nut ultimately will pull it further on as, as you go if, if you need to use it to do that. So now what I'm doing is packing a little bit of grease into the front side of this before I stick the bearing in for the front side. This will deliver a little bit more grease down to the center of the axle between where the bearings are. And once again, just make sure everything's well lubricated and there's plenty of grease in there. And we slide in our outer bearing. Remember these are tapered, so you wanna put them in with the taper side going in and the wider side facing out. And with that on there, give the wheel a little bit of a spin. Everything seems to be spinning just fine, feels good. And now we've got some excess grease <laughs> to, to clean up again. And now we're gonna put on the, the washer where it goes correctly, which is on the outside side. And then our castle nut. So it's all the way tightened and then just a little bit loosened so that the cotter pin goes through the axle shaft. So now we put our adjustable wrench on there to snug it down all the way. And then that's where I can feel once again to see, make sure that the wheel is spinning correctly. Everything feels all right. It's not too tight. It's not too loose. It's not wobbling. And then we grab our brand new cotter pin 
and uh, line it up with the hole. Now the holes were all filled up with grease, so I kind of have to go by feel, but I know approximately where it's at. And what I do is I just move the castle nut back and forth a little bit so that I can get the cotter pin lined up in the hole. Once the cotter pin's through, double check the wheel once again, make sure it's not too tight. And then we just bend the tabs on our cotter pin to lock it in place. The only thing left to do is put on the grease cap. Wasn't sure whether or not I was going to pack the grease cap full of grease or not, so I decided to go ahead and do that because once again, a little bit extra grease doesn't hurt and anything like a bearing buddy or other type of device would have grease packed in it. You might be wondering why I'm using these simple, cheap dust covers as opposed to the ones with a grease fitting in there or something that's re-greasable like bearing buddies. And the reason is because I'm only traveling short distances. The fittings that were on here were really big and kind of clunky and very old. And quite honestly, these work fine. All you have to do is pop them off periodically and check them. And the amount of driving I'm going to do, those things are gonna last me forever. And the most important thing is to prevent water intrusion and to make sure that there is enough grease inside. And that cap, can do that job perfectly fine. Anybody who takes care of their wheel bearings and is conscientious of it usually doesn't have any problems with them. It's the people who just neglect them forever and ever and ever that seem to have problems with them. Now tapping these caps on is a little tricky because they're, they're a press fit. So uh, basically I ended up resorting to uh, using a block of wood on this as well to try to get this cap tapped on there. And even then I dented it up just a little bit. Had I been at a better angle and have been a little bit more patient at the time, I probably could have put it in without denting it up. So I hope this video helped you feel more comfortable with attempting your own wheel bearing repair or maintenance. The parts are not hard, they're not expensive, and as you see, you just need some hand tools. And by the way, be sure to check out this video right here next. That's a good video. That's the one you should watch next.